A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusions. By thoughts I mean specifically chatter in the skull, perpetual and compulsive repetition of words, of reckoning and calculating. I'm not saying that thinking is bad. Like everything else, it's useful in moderation. A good servant, but a bad master. And all so-called civilized peoples have increasingly become crazy and self-destructive because through excessive thinking they have lost touch with reality. Most of us would have rather money than tangible wealth and a great occasion is somehow spoiled for us and less photographed. And to read about it the next day in the newspaper is oddly more fun for us than the original event. This is a disaster. To get in touch with reality, there is an art of meditation, of what is called yoga or jhana in India, chan in China, and zen in Japan. It is the art of temporarily silencing the mind, of stopping the chatter in the skull. Of course, you can't force your mind to be silent. That would be like trying to smooth ripples in water with a flat iron. <laughs> water becomes clear and calm only when left alone. Leave it alone! Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Monday, November 12th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time. You've entered the boom zone. You're looking at the GFS models and they look snowy. They look extremely snowy. We're going to get to them as the snow piles up on the East Coast over a month before winter begins. It's not a sin. Keep calm. It's boom time. You've entered the effing awesome classroom, and I won't even talk about it. California wildfires. Here we have updates, maps, and coverage of L.A. and the Bay Area fires. Man, they had some good lighting there. California wildfires on both ends of the state are causing major destruction and taking lives. As counties across California continue to be devastated by wildfires, the campfire has become the most destructive in the state's history. Based on the number of structures destroyed, the Woosley Fire in Malibu and surrounding areas has scorched 143 square miles, destroyed thousands of structures, including celebrity homes, Illuminati much? See below for complete coverage. This link will give you links to every link that links you to other links that will link you to the links of those other links. Whew. And that's tonight's first link. Boom. Yes. Hello, train. Boom. Yes, that's a yowza. Come check out the links below. Whoa, watch it. Hey, did you hear? California power companies reported outages just minutes before the deadly wildfire outbreak. This PSENG has been lighting fires all year. And it is <laughs> beyond contempt. Look at the headline. Read the data. Misappropriate money much. They don't care about you or your history. They care about the ducats. Follow the money, folks. Winter storm warning today. Thunder snow for Texas Panhandle in the 12th of November. I can't remember when that happened. Well, you better remember. A winter storm warning is in effect all day through Monday today for the Texas Panhandle with seven inches of snow was expected. The warning covers southwestern central Texas Panhandle and includes many other areas of the Panhandle, including the handle of the pan. Take a look at Amarillo. That's yellow Texas or Amarillo, Texas, however you want to say it. Texas is a schmexus and it's a nexus for the bestest of the schmexus. No, I don't know. We, anyway. 
This is 11.40 p.m. last night. Travel was discouraged across the panhandle until after lunch Monday. That's because everyone was full and then they didn't want to cramp up. Snow continues to fall and is accumulating on roads, killing toads. And this is not the end. A second storm with snow, ice, and rain will bring travel disruptions from the Midwest and Southern U.S. to the Northeast, spanning Wednesday night into Friday. And we're just Monday night. It's not, we're just Monday night, and still we need snow busting trains. It's insane in the membranes, but it's hilarious at the same time. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, I, never mind. It's fall. We'll yell at you in the winter. You prick. Watch this train. It's insane. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom! <laughs> Motorists and airline passengers in much of the eastern U.S. should be prepared for shitting their ponds and preparing to die because it's not even winter and they need to de-ice your plane before you take off. We're talking heavy delays in a second winter-like storm moving through midweek, running its course up the east coast, making most people toast. A weather pattern more typical of late December or early January, which is why we're calling this month, November, will continue across much of the eastern U.S. this week. I feel a little tweaked. The pattern not only features much colder than average conditions for the middle of November, more like November, remember, 20 to 35 degrees below normal, but it's also packed with winter storm style storms. And that's a winter storm style storm style. Following the most recent storm with snow, ice, and rain from Monday to Tuesday night, a second storm called Norm <laughs> will take a similar path from the Gulf of Mexico to the southeast Canada during the middle of the later part of the week. Yes. Now, we're basing all these predictions on other predictors and predictions coming out of models and modelers who are not dollars. <laughs> But this is simply unprecedented in a global warming world, which is why no one's talking about it. Along much of the Atlantic seaboard, the storm will bring drenching rain. Enough rain may fall to bring a renewed risk of flash flooding and urban flooding to areas that have already been flooded. Whew. Totally fluxed. That's the midweek outlook. Buried in snow. Ho! Oh, did you hear about the near record cold temperatures happening now? Oh, wow! Holy cow! The weather system which brought snow to some of the Kansas City viewing area, flurries around Lubbock, Texas, and other areas is creating and will continue to create strong winds and wind chills and other chills ranging from 10 to 20 degrees. That's the end of the sentence. I didn't say below anything. It's That's the temperature. Yeah. And it's going to get even colder, I was tolder. Lubbock, Texas, KCBD, we will see near record cold Tuesday mornings in the Southern Plains as the snow decreases along with cloud cover and wind. It will be in freezing on Tuesday morning. Low temps will fall into the mid-teens and northwest South Plains with a low of 11 in Lubbock. The thermometers will fall to 19. That's just five degrees short of the record. And I believe they might break it. The average low temp this time of year is 37 degrees, not 16 in Lubbock. That's a flubbock. As for snowfall from the system, this heaviest occurred in the panhandle with the Spearman community receiving eight inches of global warming goodness and other communities from four to six inches of snow. The South Plains had amounts near two inches and these people, Stan, is, they're weird and it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Snow is ending this evening and as the clouds move east and the sun will return tomorrow, the temperatures will plummet tonight. Yeah. Yeah, they're talking about it warming up to 40. What is shorty? Slick roads, record cold temps could develop in central Illinois tonight after the snowfall. This is coming from the National Weather Service. Hazardous weather outlook for much of central Illinois today. Decatur, while it looked a lot like Christmas, 
<laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like global warming's a fraud as we get buried this fall. All the schmucks in the global warming community can suck it as we get buried in global warming fall. Boom! Meteorologist Dan Smith said the weather system that brought the snow has passed. And global warming can kiss his ass. However, he said below average temperatures are still, still expected to last for an extended time. Oh, that's just fine. That's what's the grand solar minimum. Look at this guy. My God. Holy macaroni. The Weather Service issued hazardous weather outlook that said Tuesday will bring unseasonably cold wind chill values in the single digits to Illinois. Oh boy. The low wind chill will return late Tuesday night and early Wednesday, the Weather Service said. Christian DeWitt, Douglas, Logan, Macon, McLean, Morgan, Maltre, Piat, Sagamon, and Shelby counties are among those in the outlook. Oh, ho, ho. heads up. Not much of Monday snowfall accumulated in Macon County. While it did make for some white scenery as it settled on trees and colder surfaces, which we like to refer to as smurfaces, let's get on with the update. Heavy lake effect snow to create perilous travel conditions across the Great Lakes by midweek, as predicted by the Oppenheimer Ranch Project last year and this year and every year moving forward. <laughs> Are you picking it up? I don't think I need to repeat myself. Oh, I do. Every single fucking night. That's my plight. Take a bite. A brief but heavy burst of lake effect snow will create dangerous travel conditions by midweek in the entire Great Lakes region, including along Interstate 90 corridor of New York and PA. The lake effect snow may once again turn into a nightmare for motorists, similar to what occurred Saturday across the eastern Great Lakes after they underpredicted the snow as one to two inches. And that looks like king feet on this tweet. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Lake effect snow showers and squalls will develop from west to east, downwind of the Great Lakes Monday night into Wednesday. That's now, kids, said AccuWeather senior meteorologist Christina Padowanski. What if she's Polish? wonder if she has one of those mole -ishes. A reinforcing shot of cold air set to whip over the Great Lakes and northeast behind an early week storm will be the trigger for the snow squalls and showers. Heavy lake effect snow Tuesday through Wednesday. Locally heavy blowing and drifting, travel delays, poor visibility, and lots of blue areas to the east of gigantic bodies of water. The snow will first stream off of Lake Superior in Michigan late Monday night. That's now into Tuesday. That's in the morning or when you're watching in the morning now. Before ramping up downwind of Lake Erie late Tuesday, which is the bruise day, several more inches of snow can be tacked on the Erie, bringing its early season totals five weeks before winter above record territory, which will be downgraded by all the systems and the NOAA and all the other people. And they'll say it really didn't happen and it's not going to be the record snow ever because it's global warming. How could it possibly have that many fucking inches? And Erie, what a query. An area of high pressure moving from west to east will help we quick to shut down that snow. Yeah, Tuesday night into Wednesday. However, the event will just be getting underway in the Lee and Lake Ontario area where a band of very heavy snow is projected to set up. Ho ho! AccuWeather meteorologist Brett Rathbun <laughs> is concerned that Syracuse, New York will lie right in the heart of this heavy snow band. We're talking a foot up your butt in Syracuse. That's between 6 to 12 inches if you didn't know. Expected to accumulate in and around the city with significant lower accumulations just a few dozen miles to the northeast and southwest. Several inches of snow could pile up within an hour's time. Oh my. And we are nowhere near winter. I think I have a splinter in my face from all this nonsense. Yeah, it's a boom. All right, we're in the boom room. So you're going to get a little bit of the boom boom. 
especially when it comes to snow. And it's hilarious because they said we would never see it. We're going to get to that in a minute if you follow us. Meanwhile, Wisconsin. Ah! You want to play cards? Come on. Yeah. Let's do it. So, heavy lake effect snow to create perilous travel conditions across the Great Lakes by midweek, and we'll be reporting on it by midweek. What, what mountains are getting snow through Thanksgiving? I didn't think any were supposed to get snow at, at all, ever. <laughs> but apparently they're all getting snow this Thanksgiving. In the West Colorado and Western Canada will be the lone areas to receive significant snow while the Northeast racks up two additional major storms all the way to Gobble Gobble Day. Starting around Thanksgiving, the pattern may begin to change with snow and cold returning to the West. Yes, California. The fires will be out at the end of November. You hear what I say? Please remember, on Saturday, November 11th, the storm moved through Colorado with the deepest snow falling in Colorado's eastern mountains. Eldora Mountain, 30 miles as the crow flies west of Denver, 6 to 10 inches, totally buried, having one of the best opening seasons ever in recorded history. It's not a mystery. Yes, the alarmists, the global warming alarmists were wrong. Al Gore was wrong. The IPCC has been wrong consistently for two decades. How stupid are you? Forecast for this week, the storm track will keep most of the western U.S. dry. But that's not a fly in your eye. That's snow all the way down through Texas and a burying in the northeast. Monday the 12th through Friday the 16th, significant snows burying all of New York State, all of Vermont, most of northern New Hampshire, northern Maine. Connecticut gets in the mix with 12 to 18 inches of snow through Friday. Yeah. The next storm over the Northeast will be similar to the previous two systems with a mix of snow, freezing rain, and hell for the motorists in the major, in the major cities and the major metro areas. <laughs> Why do you think I moved? The second storm over the Northeast will hit on Friday, November 16th. This storm may take a slightly more southerly track, in which case everyone is totally fluxed. <laughs> yeah, that means more snow for other areas that have never seen snow at this time of year. Say it ain't snow, but it is. That's the type of precipitation on Friday 11-16. I'll leave you links to all this. And that shows heavy snow in all of New York State and the entire state of Vermont, New Hampshire, and most of Maine. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. But these models tend to not lie, which is why I digress. Let's check out the extended forecast. This shows an extremely cold area off the west coast hitting in the end of November, third week, that could totally bring heavy snows to the Sierras as we hit the 23rd of next weekend. Next weekend could bring heavy snows to the Sierras and it's gonna be freezing until then up in the northeast while there will be a warm up in the upper Midwest which is the best. <laughs> it's the only thing that rhymed. I don't believe that. Where I'm sitting is the best Pagosa Springs, damn it. And we have really amazing internet, as you can tell. It's almost like hell. We're going to get to lots more topics. It's only 18 minutes in. I'm looking to go like three, four hours tonight. Boom! How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's hilarious. Almost scariest. You might have seen some of the nonsense coming out from Strange Sounds, Tyler over at Secure Team, and other YouTube sites about the major cracking over in India. Let's do that later. Well, as a geologist, I did my due diligence and I looked into it. And it's exactly as they explained, in fact. The cracks are due to vibration, due to heavy machinery, not vehicles. This headline is wrong. Read the article. And the reason I'm going to say this is because the salacious pictures you had did not give context. But this article right here has context. And it is in co the context is this picture, which is I'm, I'm about to blow up for you. Because I'm about to blow up the nonsense here. This has nothing to do with major faulting. Follow me. I'm about to bring you on a geology lesson. One of unconsolidated sediments and the term liquefaction. Now, we're not seeing liquefaction here, but we're seeing something similar that's called slow slip slump. 
Yeah, Triple S. We had been covering it at Rattlesnake Ridge about six to eight months ago as the Rattlesnake Ridge slow slipped and slumped down the valley. It's still slipping like this. And if you can remember, this is very indicative of that slow slip slump. These type of fissures, which are curved in an upward arc of the downward slope. This is very indicative of high vibration or movement in an area that is slumping. And they claim that there's a huge excavation just over the hill here where there's major equipment drilling and all day. And this is what you're going to get in an area that's hot is hotter than hell. If this is hot macadam and there's vibration in the road, it's going to slump. This is a very steep hill. It's almost like 50 feet down to the field down here. This is just poor road building and management with high vibration due to a construction site here to the left. It has nothing to do with seismicity or anything. Completely debunked. Strange sounds, you can suck it. And you can too, Tyler. We already, we know you're mostly a fraud. <laughs> it's proven. Just Google Secure Team 10 Fraud and you'll learn what I know. Say it ain't snow, setting the record straight. Awesome blog, the climatism or whatever it's called, climatism.blog. The problem with lying or perpetuating a scam is that you have to be aware of the spin you've spun to get you there. And we're seeing record snows all over the world. We've been reporting on it for a year and a half. And it's only going to continue. So there's nowhere to hide. And if you want to get some of the facts, come read this blog. It is top notch. I recommend it. I'm going to leave you links below. We're deep into the update. So I'm going to rush on. Did you hear about Delta Airlines spending 12 million on new de-icing equipment in Atlanta? Let that sink in. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We're talking Santa in Atlanta if they're re-engineering their winter storm management approach, which is true. So the powers that be do know what's going on, and the people in Atlanta are smart. It does not snow. They don't need de-icing equipment, but they're spending $12 million on new de-icing equipment because the real paradigm is that it does snow there, and they do need de-icing equipment because global warming is total shite. No longer fight it. It's hilarious. And that's a boom. Yes, that's Wisconsin. That's how they play cards. Father and son. That's a Barks and a beer. Barks and a beer, boom. Wait for it. Boom! 12 million on new de-icing equipment in Atlanta. I can't make this shit up. I'm reporting on it. Let's check the GFS model and see why they may need that de-icing equipment this winter because we're still five weeks out from winter and there's heavy snow approaching the Atlanta metro area. <laughs> Just less than 100 miles away, we're talking 10 to 14 inches of snow in the southern mountains of the Appalachians. And this is by mid-November. Heavy snow to accumulate the 15th and the 16th up the northeast. Look at the heavy snows in Mexico. The map doesn't even go further south. This is the equator down here. Are you picking it up? Snow equator? <laughs> Seismic update, no quakes of note. Mid-ocean ridges still spreading. 5.6 in the central east Pacific. We're ringing in Tonga at 206 kilometers. And up here in the middle of nowhere, 4.6 in Norway, up north of Norway, in nowhere. Holy hair. Holy macaroni. Frack quake, mid Craton, North America. No one gives a fuck. Yeah, so the earth is still spreading, as we predicted. And I had to block a few people today that said they lost. I lost all credibility. Clearly, I have no, no idea what I'm talking about. Why don't I talk to a scientist? I wish people would really look into my background before they sound so stupid.
Now let's get to some strange, let's give strange sounds the benefit of the doubt. They misreported on the slump and the fractures that were happening due to vibration in the ground in India, as well as Tyler, but they nailed it here on this update on Twitter, where the last volcano to have exploded in Canada, Mount Meager in BC, is cracking, collapsing, and potentially threatening the safety of people who live there. It's true. Come check out the article. This baby hasn't erupted in mass for quite a while, but it is not our style to not give you the facts. And this, in fact, may be the first mountain to erupt in the Cascade Range, which it's in. Still in there, like swimwear, even though it's in Canada. And I believe the volcanic activity will begin in northern Canada, just above Washington State, and move south. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Krakatoa is about to blow up. I'm giving it three months to one year. That's my modest estimate. I will narrow it down as the time progresses. Sabankaya sporadic puff emissions in Krakatoa volcanic eruption today. As well as Abiko, Reventador, and Popo. Say it ain't so-so. Now let's talk about a friend of the channel, Sasha Dobler, who's getting a lot of pushback from the Grand Solar, community, Grand Solar Minimum community by a book he just published. If you don't know about it, you're looking at it now. Solar History, the connection of solar activity, war, peace, and the human mind in the second millennium. Let me recommend you go get this book. I'm not making a penny off of it. Um, but it is a good read, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Sasha Dobler is a scientist. He's a, an investigator. And he looks into esoteric information that most scientists wouldn't and comes to conclusions that most other scientists wouldn't because they, it hangs them out there on a limb. And he's hanging out there on a limb. And I'm going to back him up on this. Everything in this book is true based on all the information that he uncovered. And it is absolutely 100% historically correct. And his predictions will probably unfold exactly the way he describes them. So if you want a little insight into what's coming, check out his book. It's pretty reasonable. Now, the one thing he didn't include is the fact that I, I believe this is where you're missing the point, community, that the, it is the drop-off into these periods that are chaotic and they cause death and destruction. When you're at the bottom of them, there is no death and destruction that's happening because everyone's already dead. So you're all waiting, all you Christians and Armageddonists are waiting for the end of the world. It's not coming. We're going to make it. In fact, the time that's coming is amazing. It's an enlightenment period with no more war, clarity, evolution, clear thought, and everything that he discusses in this text. If you want to know the happy ending to the Grand Solar Minimum, buy the book. And stop being such a defeatist and an Armageddonist because I'm about to stick my foot up your ass if you stick with us. Let's check out the sun. We have a sunspot, dead center disc, sunspot 2726. We're looking at solar ham right now, visible sunspot regions, dead center disc, tiny little baby, but it does have beta magnetism, beta BXO, location is north, 6 west, 01, flare probability, C flare 5%, M 1%, X 1%. And this is, you can check the 48 hour movie here. Here's the magnetogram and the intensity. And the reason we're bringing this to your attention is because there is a market uptick on the GOES X-ray flux, which hasn't happened in weeks or months because we look at this stuff. Market increase uh, just uh, eight hours into November 12th UTC. Where you can clearly see the yellow and the purple line extend above the red and the blue line. So we're going to be watching this because a, even a tiny spot like this that shoots a solar flare earth facing directly toward us there could be some perturbations, especially if it comes up here in the mid-M range or the low X. So we're going to watch this spot closely as it passes by us in the next 12 hours. Here you see the BZ has been off the chart and the phi angle shift. The BZ is actually tightening up now, but the phi is staying the same. As the density decreases, we've had another spike over the last 12 hours here. 
in plasma speed, but it's really not kicking the KP in anything that is worrying us. So we'll be watching the sun. Now, please stop sending me emails into my inbox about the solar storm in 1972 that caused mines to explode. Because if I get another one, my mind will explode. It will. I've gotten at least 25 separate emails, maybe 40 messages on all my platforms about articles coming out. And they're still coming out, unfortunately, in the mainstream. It's nauseating. Now, we, we know that at all solar minimums, major solar flare events happen. And at solar max, major solar flare events happen. And even Mount St. Helens was kicked off by our solar max during a solar cycle max. So the sun controls all types of things on the planet, volcanoes, especially the grid. Now, what's being suppressed from you is the information which we won't do on this channel. In fact, in October, late October of this year, the paper that sparked all of the articles came out in the AGU journal on little known consequences of the 4th August 1972 ultra-fast coronal mass ejection. Facts, commentary, and call to action. If you want to know the facts, read the paper. Don't read the articles, <laughs> which are sharticles. And that's a boom. Wipe your pants. Like a good boy. Now, it's not news to us that solar storms can cause perturbations to the grid and other electronic devices, which is why ad nauseum we've had interviews with Lee Wheelbarger telling you how to harden your own home security systems, your own home electrical systems, and every other system in your home with the use of Faraday cages and other devices. So if you're too lazy to look at the other 805 videos that we've published, that's on you, not on us. And here's the paper that you should read if you care about the actual event and the science behind it. Stick your behind behind it. And that will be a boom. A boom boom. Remember when you learned that when you were a kid? You want to know how humans evolved to live in the cold? Yeah. We, we're living in an ice age. That's how. Humans have been alive through at least five major glacial cycles. And during that last 250,000 years, only 40,000 of the years were warm. How come you were not taught that in school? It simply makes you a fool. I just taught it to you now. I bet you're going to say, wow. We're living in an ice age. Regardless of what anyone tells you, it has not ended. And it's glorious. And we're going into a time that causes mind expansion, evolution, and other wonderful things. If you want to know how humans evolved to live in the cold, Read the article. According to some relatively new research, many of our early human cousins preceding Homo sapien migrated north by hundreds of thousands or even millions of years. Crossbreeding with other ancient hominids gave some subsets of human population the genes to contend and thrive in cold, harsh climates. If you have those genes, you're going to survive and thrive in the future. <laughs> Read the article. Don't be lazy. You know about being lazy? The, gr <laughs> the global warming alarmists are lazy because they don't check the facts about polar bears. And it's getting insane. We've been keeping up to date, reporting on over 60,000 total polar bears, which is an increase of 10 times since the 1960s. That's a massive increase. Now, there are so many bears up in Nunavut that the numbers have become unsafe. Now, if the global warming, global alarmist community continues to use polar bears as part of their dogma, I mean, how stupid and lazy are they?
There are now cities up in the Arctic that have way more bears than is safe for the ecosystem and the populations up there. There are too many polar bears in parts of Nunavut and climate change hasn't yet affected any of them, says a draft management plan from the territorial government that contradicts all the bullshit that has been shoved down your throat for decades. And that is tonight's biggest boom. I love shoving it right down your throat. Frauds. Let's get to some good stuff. There has to be something we can still do. Please, Mr. Gore, you're the only person who knows anything about it. Say you're sorry for making fun of me. We didn't, we didn't realize there were... Say one. you're sorry for making fun of me. We're sorry for making fun of you. No, we're not. You're a that fraud, Al. You can suck it. At all. So continue to bowl and get fat, you D-bag. There has to be something we can still do. Please, Mr. Gore, you're the only person who knows anything yeah, about it. Yeah, we can it. stop... Say you're sorry for making fun of me. <laughs> Being such pushovers. We didn't, we didn't realize and there were facts, facts, kids. you're sorry for making fun of Al me. Al Gore's a fat D-bag that bowls we're in his basement. Fun of you. That didn't sound serial at all. The man's electric bill is equivalent to 30 homes in North America. The guy's a fraud. And he is incapable... And hasn't spent a second doing any research if he's right or wrong. He doesn't care. It's a narrative. In fact, he's going to be mo one of the most embarrassed humans of all times in the next decade. And it's time that you start to rise to the occasion and learn about the truth. And Wal Thornhill is one of the number one scientists and one of my heroes in the entire world living today. Because he went on a limb decades ago and he picked up the work of Velikovsky and he followed the work of Dave Talbot and the Electric Universe and he didn't care what the critics said because he did good science and he continues to do good science to this second. In fact, he is rewriting cosmology as we know it. And it may be decades before we give him the accolades that he deserves, but Velikovsky is going to be remembered as the most important scientist in the 20th century. Mark my words. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, come check out the Watcher's article, Wall Thornhill, Velikovsky's Astrophysics, and figure out why I am so adamant about this information. It is absolutely 100% the cutting edge of science. It is the closest to the truth that we can get today. And it will literally rewrite everything about humanity, religion, and cosmology because we are all connected electrically. And it has always been going on forever. It's an infinite universe with infinite possibilities. Please remember. Come check out the article. Now, let's talk about the scumbags that are perpetrating the fraud. The Vatican. And they just ordered U.S. bishops to delay taking action on the scumbag rapist priests. Once again, these delays have been going on for decades. The Roman Catholic Church is the most disgusting cabal on the planet. Robbing humanity of millions of dollars to shelter the rapist leaders and you continue to pack your children in your car every Sunday to take them off to the rapist indoctrination centers where you then shovel your hard-earned money into the baskets that were woven by children that were being raped by the priests. You're disgusting. This is the most disgusting human on the planet. Pope Francis. This might as well be Satan, this fucking scumbag. And if I'm offending you, thank God. Because there is no God that would support this rapist cabal of thieves that have not only stolen your money and the innocence of your children, but they have stolen all of the ancient information and they're holding it in the basement of their racist hatred, rapist, 
Vatican. Boom! I can't wait until Rome burns forever. But first, we're going to get those books. And we're going to hang this prick on his own cross right up his ass. <laughs> I hope that wasn't too much for you, kids. Now, one of my favorite bands in recent memory is PTP. I met them at the March Against Monsanto. This guy walked up to me and just handed me a couple CDs and didn't say a word. Vinny Straub. He rocks. I'm trying to get him out the Lee Con because he has a really positive message. It has nothing to do with Roman Catholics and their evil shit. It's all about peace and love. We're all in this together. Opt out. Get out. Take the red pill. It's an amazing feeling. Meditating, healing, engaged in levitating ceilings, dimensions. You can't make me feel these. I have to want it. The beginning is near me as I climb this ladder. Let's stare in this face, overcome this wall. It's apparent my fate is spiritual freedom. You can hear it through these drums, speaking clearly through these tongues, merely tear free from each one. 33 harmonics, 32 overtones as the heartbeat drums. I recharge these homes as they come to the light. See, I'm guided at night. Fire flies my sight, though I pride my mind is all right. Check out Power Through the People. PTP is here.com. There's free tracks. He'll send you his whole CD for free. And that's the way it should be. It's not about money. It's not about politics. It's certainly not about religion. It's about being one species, one humanity, working together to solve our problems, which are deep. And they're so deep, they're hilarious. Throw your television out the window now. You're being brainwashed. You need to opt out of the situation now and start providing for your future. And that's a boom. This is the longest update I've ever made and the truest words I've ever spoken. And I'm going to continue to speak the truth every single day until the moment I can't breathe. Be safe.